I'm Pat and this is Jared. And this is Kid Talk. Kid Talk is where we interview people who make games, design games. And pretty much anyone who likes games. Yeah. And today we're interviewing Jesse Anderson with Quacklope. Hi. Hi. Um, <laughs> your thing is called Quacklope. Why is it called that? Because Quacklopes are adorable. Also, because they're a real creature that lives in the eastern part of the you know, United States, around where I come from. It's a duck with horns. Uh, you know, they molt every every summer and then they they travel down south people don't know a lot about them but i figured it was a good thing to name a brand after right yeah yeah um but have you ever seen a jackalope i have i have heard of a jackalope that's going to be a rabbit with horns which have you ever seen one i haven't i can't say i've actually seen a jackalope before or a quackalope for that matter but jackalopes are actually real i think so quackalopes I'd be willing to say both of them are, are legitimate. In all seriousness, the reason why I named Quackalope Quackalope is because it's, it's cute and memorable. Um, and that brand, that uh, identity didn't exist anywhere else online. So as we develop whatever we are, we get to remind people and let people know exactly what this thing is. So that was the, that was the idea behind it. Why did you decide to start Quackalope? Uh, so why did I decide to, cause I, I, I really like board games. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a simple enough answer, right? So a few years back, it's been about a year and a half that we've been doing Quackalope at this point. Um, and I had a, uh, a shift in sort of what I wanted to do with my life. So for a long time, I was a wedding photographer, um, and, uh, I kind of was going down a certain career path. Um, And there was a point where I really had to make a determination uh, if I wanted to kind of what would my dream job be or if I could pursue something um, that for me was going to be the best thing ever and I could spend five years trying to do that, what what would that be? And I was like, well, I, I do really like board games. I like creating videos. And I figure if I could spend five years building a career that allows me to just play board games, that wouldn't be too bad, right? Like make a living playing board games. So yeah, right. That's not, that's not too bad of a career path. So I figured it's out- It's not what, bad uh, of a career path at all. Not all. So what I figured was if I make a video or multiple videos a week for the next five years, Uh, at the end of that journey, I'd be somewhere really cool. So right now we're about a year and a half into that goal. And I figure in three and a half years, I'll be somewhere really cool. Hmm. That sounds cool. Yeah. But, um, what fruit would be your favorite out of the four of them? So at the moment there is base game root. There is the, uh, Corvid Conspiracy with the uh, Underground Duchy. There is uh, the River Folk and the Lizards. And then there is the Better Bot system, so the Solo. So out of those four, now you do have to have the base game to play them all together. My favorite faction in Root is going to be the Corvid Crows. Um, they're a little bit deceptive. They, uh, they run around kind of sneaking into and out of areas. They plant bombs or they set up snares or traps. And the entire time you're trying to play mind tricks on the other people that are around the table, uh, convincing them that you've placed something that you haven't. So I like, I like that game. But there's also the Underworld expansion for Root. So the Underworld is where those crows are included in. Oh. I thought it was just called the Underworld expansion. It is. I, I said it wrong. I confidently say names without uh, having accurate data behind it. Oh. We, Still we pretty cool. don't have the crows. We don't have the crows in it. Yeah, we don't Who's have your favorite? The, we don't have the expansions. We just have the base game. But I, I think my favorite person in it. I mm-hmm. actually haven't played it, but I think my favorite person that looks would be Marquis the Cat. Marquis the Cat? Mm-hmm. I think mine would be um, the birds. Um, the birds? The have Eerie you Dynasty. The, have you played the Eerie Dynasty before? Mm-hmm. That's it. How'd you? I feel like I would have won. I had one of the cards that if I controlled a specific number of Fox territories, then I could automatically win the game. Mm -hmm. But it had to be at the beginning of my turn. And I was playing against our dad. He kept like fighting my people and controlling the territories instead. 
Yeah, those and those dominance cards are really hard to win by. Just don't yeah. tell them you're doing the dominance card. Wait, what? Well, you gotta you have to let the table know for at least one turn. So they have a they have a chance to stop you. Yeah, a well, long chance to stop you. Do you have to tell them you're you that? Do you have to tell them that? You're trying to get the territories to do the dominance card? Well, the dominance card's on the table where everyone can see it. Oh. Yeah, but... Yeah, so they might, uh, they might see you coming. Yeah, but um, I kept trying to do it, but I was close to getting all 30 points that I needed. Mm-hmm. But I decided to do that because I felt like I'd win easier, and I just wanted to try. Did you enjoy it? Mm-hmm. But I lost. That's all right. I think, uh, you know, I, man, I lose, I lose quite a few games and my whole thing is I really don't mind. I really don't mind losing. I just want to have a good time playing a game. Mm-hmm. Same as Peyton. And yeah. me. I just, um, I say that, um, even if I lose, I still have a good time. I think that's important because you're not going to be able to win every time. And I think if you did, if you did win every time, the other people playing with you probably wouldn't have quite as much fun either. I just like having fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I think that's the nice thing about the board game world and and this community as a whole is uh, it's a lot of people that just want to get together around a table and, and, you know, share a moment or have a little bit of time together. What is it that you like about Root so much? I like, I like Root because it tricks people into playing a uh, sort of heavier combat game. Um, it has it has that really really adorable kind of cover to it, right? With the little animal meeples and the uh, the incredible artwork, and then you sit down and you realize that this is strategic, and uh, each one of the factions are complicated, um, and it's it's a little bit mean, which can be a little bit fun when you're playing when your dad's shutting down your attempts to win victory yeah. time and time again yeah. right that's kind of like what happened with her mom she thought all the pieces were cute and then she thought and then she noticed this is a war game yeah not very, just very quickly a, realized it's not cute but it was actually more just at the middle of the game is what she said like you're playing and then you realize i have mm-hmm. to fight so i can win i can't just <laughs> run from this person so that I can win and not get killed. I have to fight. Someone would just, they're like, are you going to fight? <laughs> and then they would be like, you didn't tell me you were supposed to fight. Yeah! <laughs> we know My you favorite. like Root, but we also know you like Dungeons and Dragons. Out of those two, what's your favorite? Between, between D&D and Root? Root? Mm-hmm. That's a... Uh... Man, that's a hard that's a hard decision. So, I like my favorite part of games is the storytelling. Um, I like seeing and and experiencing something that's kind of unwinding. And when it comes to D and D, I really like running the story. Right, I like being the DM. Um, we like we like that too. Yeah, I really like like in books. I like reading like the beginning part that not many other people read like the story in the story. It's yeah, like, like it the, tells uh, you what the story is about. The preface to it. And those things are important because those are the elements that the author wanted to make sure you read before you actually got to the main story. So it's important to like stop at the front of a book and double check and read through those if you can. Uh, when it comes to D&D and Root, here's, here's what I'd say. If I'm playing, so if I'm either a character in the D&D story or I'm playing in Root, I'd, I'd put them both on an equal level. I love both of those games for different reasons. But if I'm telling the story, if I'm the person running or DMing the D&D game, I don't think really anything beats that. Um, being able to be the person that's, that's tying a story together is probably the best experience in gaming I can have. Guess how many games you had, you have... I man, I haven't counted, so I, I don't want to take the time to like stick them all into BGG or something. So if I was gonna guess, I might I might just now be at maybe 120 games or so. I think I think probably I have I have four I have five full bookshelves full of games, 
And then I have games that I've stuck in my closet that I just, you know, don't, don't play that much anymore. And then I, I now have games that are starting to pile up on my floor. So I am, uh, I am overrun by games. We have two bookshelf full of games and we don't have a hundred yet. Like we have like 70 or 80 maybe? We have like 99. We probably have a hundred. How often, how often do you all play games as a family? Most of the time we play games. Sometimes we just play like Except me, some Peyton, of- and our mom. Sometimes we play just me and Peyton. Most of the time mm-hmm. we play all four of us. Yeah, but um, on Atama, we can't play as a family. It's only two players. But it would be harder if it was a four-player game. If you did a free throw, then someone would just be like, or it would be hard because you would destroy one of them and then there would be two others that can destroy you but then they would both be by each other and then one of them could destroy the other what are some of your favorite games we have a really cool one um somewhere behind us right Right there. Thanos Rising. Which one is it? Thanos Rising? Mm-hmm. I got that one for my fan? birthday. Yeah? But for his birthday, it's actually pretty hard, but we made the movie wrong because in Infinity War, it's for Infinity War, they lost, but in the game, our first time went playing it, we won. There you go. So you should have you should have lost two or three times before you uh, you actually were able to overcome him, right? Yeah, yeah. but Baba almost died because all of his people had like one or two parts left. One. I had all my people had one had Who one were you hit playing left. As? And and um, uh, I was playing as Doctor Strange. But the okay. only thing I could do is use my person to heal two of his people. I healed the people that have. The most hearts. I healed Spider Man and Iron Man. Yeah, I like Spider Man. But our favorite games? Mine is Dice Throne. Mine is okay. Deadly Doodles. Deadly Doodles what? is like a game where you it's, draw cards and then make it. It's my map. favorite game. Let me tell him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you have um, player mats and you have markers and. There is loot. If you get on the dragon, then the loot gets doubled. Yeah, and it's by uh, it's by Steve Steve Jackson, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And then you can go in the second one, Deadly Duels Two. Mm-hmm. There's diamonds, emeralds, and even there's skeletons. There's coins. There's skulls. And there's doors. I said skeletons. There's magic doors. There's even an entrance in the middle of the board. Nice. Why do you... It's a cave. I think it's a really fun game because I like drawing and you draw where you go. And it's just really fun to do like... Cards that can, like, take points. I like Dice Throne because it's like you set up people so that you can fight. And you can play with multiple people on your team or just one person. And I like how you roll the dice, see what you can do, and pretty much everything is based on the dice. Once Mm -hmm. it was pretty hard because we did a three-on-three battle. I was thinking of doing a four on four battle, but our table was too small and we couldn't get it bigger. It's a lot of dice rolling. He won. I lost all of my people. He had all of his people still there. Um, if you were going to, if you were ever going to make a game, what would it be about? Maybe Quackalopes. If I was ever going to make a game, I mean, I of course I'd. I'd be totally down to make a game for Quackalopes, but I keep tricking other publishers into including Quackalopes in their games, uh, which seems seems like a bad decision on their behalf, but I'm, I'm a fan of it. Uh, if I was ever going to make a game, I so I really like deck building games. Do you know what deck building games are? Mm-hmm. Where you try where getting the biggest deck. 
you're well yeah. you're slowly you're slowly crafting it's not all about getting the biggest deck but it's more about getting a deck that allows you to do whatever you want to do so if you were playing a deck building game in a pirate game maybe you'd get a lot of money uh and, and a few swords or something so that you could hire a ship and sail across the seven seas and, and conquer other pirates or something or raid town so if i was if i was going to build uh or design my own game I'd probably do something that combines those elements, right? So deck building where you're, where you're building a hand of cards that achieve a certain goal combined with storytelling, um, just like I like doing in D&D, you know, crafting and putting together some sort of tale. Maybe it could be like you're trying to get the best flock of muddles. I mean, I'm, not muddles, um, quackalopes. I'm totally, I'm totally open to that. <laughs> and you have to get like the most cards. You have to set them down. And a giant, a giant flock of, of a giant flock of ducks. I'm perfectly, I'm, I'm, I'm sold already. If you could just send me information on the game you've designed, I feel like this is a pitch now. Uh, <laughs> and as far as I'm concerned, Quackalope has, we have, uh, you have our full support. <laughs> Do you like Legos? Do I like what? Legos. 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 I, so when I was little, uh, well, when I was, when I was about your age, how old are you two? Um, seven and 11. Seven and 11. So right when I was about your age, uh, a little bit younger, I lived with my grandparents for a few years um, and they had a giant big bucket. None of, the, none of them were sets. So I'm not talking Lego sets like you can craft something really particular, uh, but just a bucket full of Legos. Uh, so I used to play with them quite a bit. Now that I'm older, I've really wanted to get some of the sets. Like I wanted to get, uh, you know, some of the Star Wars uh, mechs and landscapes and stuff. I haven't been able to because uh, I'm really good at putting the colors together to help someone else build a Lego set. Uh, but for me specifically, uh, if, I, if I'm trying to build it myself, I just end up giving myself a headache. What do you like doing other than playing board games and making videos? I'm not sure at the moment that I have time to do anything but play games and make videos. But if, but if I did have time, uh, I really, so when I was 13, uh, my grandfather and I hiked the majority of the Appalachian trail, which is a trail that goes the entirety of the East coast of the United States. Um, and I, uh, am always longing to go either on road trips to go kind of see the world and, and, and go to, you know, parks and go out camping or go hiking or anything like that. Like if I could, if I could do one other thing other than play board games and make videos, it would be kind of be outside, uh, at a, a national park or um, hiking on a trail or anything like that. When you said national park, that reminded me of parks. Yeah. It's a game that we just unboxed. Every it's, single park is just a national park pretty much all over right? the world. It's 50 national parks. 59, yeah, and it's... Nine, I think? No, 50. Isn't that... Uh, that artwork's gorgeous, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Have you so, have you ever been to Yellowstone National Park? I have been to Yellowstone National Park. I went. I think I was probably fifteen when we my my family went out there. Have you all been? No. We really want been. to go. You got to tell your dad. You got to tell your dad and mom that we're going to Yellowstone National Park <laughs> in like a week. You don't even. If I'm going to be honest, you don't even really need to do the whole school thing. Just travel from national park to national park. Uh, I think that I think that would be a perfectly fine education. You hear that, Dad? Well, we're homeschooled. <laughs> you don't. I mean, you don't even need that. I mean, that part of it. No, I think what? I I think homeschooled. I think homeschooled combined with uh, traveling and interacting and seeing the world is is hands down the best way to. Um, to kind and of grow on up Saturdays, in we don't do Saturdays and Sundays. We don't do school. You don't do any school on Saturdays or Sundays? No. How are you going to learn things on Saturdays or Sundays? That's our days off. Days off? What? What a <laughs> weird concept. I think, here's the thing. I think, you should, I think you should increase the work week. You should do school on both Saturdays and Sundays, and you'll graduate at 14. Um, I don't think it's... Our school thing is supposed to go up to 14. <laughs> I think it, I, I don't know. I think that's how that works. I'm not entirely sure, but I can at least say so confidently. Has Quackalope changed since you got the big jump? 
So we've, we've been around for about a year and a half. Um, and for the most part, it's been a pretty steady growth. Um, uh, like you, you said, you know, we hit, we hit a few different milestones, right? So we crossed, uh, you know, the first hundred was a lot of fun, mostly friends and family and people I harassed on Facebook. Uh, we crossed the first thousand about two, maybe three months into the project. Um, and, and about a month ago we crossed 10,000 and then this week we should be inching up on about 16,000 total. Um, in terms of how it's changed, there's, there's a few different ways. First off, uh, I've, I've moved twice since it started. So the set has changed, the lighting's changed, the uh, location and the people that we're filming with, all of that has changed, but that's all kind of mechanical, right? Uh, in terms of the product itself, I think it's one of those things, and, and you probably, you both probably know this from interviewing or from schoolwork or from anything that you enjoy doing, whether it's games or Legos or stuff, the more you do something, uh, the better you get at it. And so over the last year and a half, we've been filming and producing videos every single week, uh, sometimes every single day. Um, and so I've gotten better at uh, talking. I've gotten, be I've gotten better at, at learning and playing games and talking about games and, and using cameras and editing things together. Um, and so I have, uh, I've gotten better at what I am trying to do just because I am uh, perpetually doing it. Why do you think you're getting more subscribers so fast? Uh, I, it's one of those, there's two elements. Um, we're doing, right now we're doing our first ever giveaway on the channel um, and through relationships and through uh, giving away some of my personally, my favorite games. Um, we've gotten a decent amount of attention from that. Um, and we did it in a way that wasn't just all about, you know, wasn't just all focused on us. So we had, we had 5,000 quacks uh, descend upon a few other YouTube channels that we're friends with. Um, so we just completely bombarded them with ducks, which was, which was a lot of fun. It's, it's fun when you can direct 5,000 ducks in a single direction. Uh, if you've never done it before, you should try it. Uh, but then along with that, the more you do something, the more videos and content you have out there, the more people are going to find you. And so now when we first started, we had, you know, 20, 30, 50 videos. We're now up to about 250 videos uh, on a variety of different topics and subjects and games. And so when people are searching online, uh, looking for questions or answers or, um, you know, finding, finding content that they enjoy, uh, they're just a little bit more likely to stumble across us, which means daily we get more views, which means we get more subscribers, and it should continue growing in that direction for a while. You said that you wanted to be able to do something about making – about playing board games and making videos and you decide on Quackalope, what do you think will happen in five years? I, five years is a long way away. We are farther along in a year and a half than I originally anticipated. Um, also, you know, the, the state of the world is different in a year and a half than I had originally foreseen. So it's really hard to predict where we'll be in five years. I, I, I know one thing sometime over the next three and a half years, I guess with, you know, that we have left for that five year original goal. Uh, I would like a house and I would like a pond and I would like a small flock of ducks. That's if, if I get that, I feel like I will have achieved my goals. You want the ducks to preferably have antlers. Uh, look, if I can find some ducks with antlers, I'm perfectly open to a herd of quackalopes. Um, if not, we, we may or may not have plans around designing duck themed costumes that turn them into antler, you know, that, that add antlers to them. I wonder if it's called a herd or a flock. So a group of ducks, if you're talking about the, the official term, there's two terms for it. So if you have a group of ducks, they are either called a paddle uh, or they're called a raft. That sounds like things you would use for a raft or, <laughs> or a boat. Or a raft. Yeah, well, if you, imagine, if you imagine a group of ducks kind of swimming in a pond all clustered together, they sort of look like a raft, right? They're kind of floating on top of the water, uh, oftentimes with like a darker or brown skin tone. So, But um, when you were talking about the costume, that reminded me um, once we put our tiny dog in a um, hot dog costume. A hot dog costume? Yeah. Did he try she to get eaten? Um, no, but no? she doesn't really you... like being in costumes. 
What type of dog do you have? Uh, dog- we have a dachshund. A dachshund. A dachshund. A dachshund is the perfect dog to put into a hot dog costume. But when we do it, she just like, she just doesn't move. Just freezes. When she just like, "Mm -hmm." (laughs) and fell over. (laughs) This is too heavy. Do you have any dogs or cats? We have, so I grew up with uh, a collection of Jack Russell Terriers which are tiny little high energy yippy dogs. Um, and now my parents have three great Pyrenees. Uh, so giant, massive dogs. They look like sheep. If you imagine a sheep that looks like a dog uh, and still acts like a sheep, that's about what they are. <laughs> we have a great Pyrenees. Her name is Do Bailey. You? Did I describe it accurately? Does your dog also look like a sheep and moderately <laughs> act like a sheep? Yes. Perfect. Pretty much. She's our guard dog. I feel like she takes guarding too seriously. She barks at, like, she barks at people who are just walking. She barks at people who are just walking their dogs. Mostly mostly because the dogs bark at her. Sometimes she tries racing a garbage truck. Okay. Ours, uh... The only thing she doesn't do that would, that a sheep would do is bark. And racing yeah, garbage truck. Sheeps don't bark that much. We've got three with very different personalities. One of them is, is hyper uh, and has never really grown up. Uh, one of them is very old and proper, kind of if you imagine a king walking around. Um, very, but a you know, king a deep, that turned into a dog? A king that turned into a dog. And then our other one, uh, if you imagine a puddle, just a puddle of water, <laughs> that is about what she is. <laughs> just laying down most of the time just just she she couldn't i mean she wouldn't walk if it meant there was food at the end of the pathway like she's she's just gonna lay there if you set her dog bowl next to her she lays down and eats at eats from it <laughs> sideways over the past year and a half what has surprised you the most about quackle oak i don't i don't know if it would be about quackle oak uh, specifically. Um, it'd be more about kind of the board game community, something that you all are a part of, your parents are part of, uh, everyone that you have interviewed and interacted with is a part of, right? Uh, I, uh, I've i been very lucky to meet some of my closest friends through Quackalo, which is something that I didn't really expect. Um, when we first started creating the channel, uh, I was predominantly doing it by myself. I, you know, I had, I had a few friends, um, but a lot of them lived kind of far away. And so at the moment, uh, probably, you know, I have, I have four or five really close friends up in the Washington DC area. And then now I have, uh, you know, three or four close friends down here in the Kentucky area. And all of those relationships, uh, have been formed and, and grown because we're doing Quackalo. Um, and so, uh, looking back on it, I'd say the most, the most surprising or interesting or thing, thing that I didn't expect necessarily, maybe I just, I wasn't aware that it was a thing that would happen, um, is that I've created and, and gained some really, really incredible people in my life uh, just because I'm doing the channel, um, which is cool. I'm really grateful for that. If your YouTube channel wasn't called Quackalope, what would it be called? So we had, we had two names when we named it Quackalope. Uh, the second one that we bought the .com for um, was called All Offline. A uh, little bit more generic, more, you know, more, a little bit more, directly tied to board games, I think. Um, but once we, once we brainstormed and found the term Quackalope, uh, we really, there wasn't that many options um, beyond that. I wanted to create a podcast at one time called We Only Play Boggle. Do you know what Boggle is? No. Boggle is a game where you, uh, you, you press down uh, and you mix up a bunch of letters and then you spell things. I think, I think that's the game. Uh, so I wanted to, I wanted to make a podcast. Basically, you know what Monopoly is? Mm-hmm. So the joke is, or Connect Four, the joke is basically, uh, we only play Connect Four or we only play Monopoly saying that, you know, that's, that's, that's the only thing we ever bring to our table. Our mom says she doesn't think she would like Dungeons and Dragons, but what do you like about it? So Dungeons and Dragons is, uh, an interesting thing because there's going to be is it you know i'd if your mom 
uh, like storytelling or going on an adventure or sitting around a table and just telling tall tales at all. Um, there's probably a version of Dungeons and Dragons that she would enjoy because there's a bunch of modules, right? So there's within the framework of D and D, um, the systems or the rule book, you know, by chance. Uh, there's a lot of other little environments you could explore. So you could be in outer space, uh, kind of, you know, conquering a ship or fighting aliens. You could be little forest creatures uh, fighting a serpent or you're baking uh, pecan pies. Um, or you could be in, you know, the classic D&D uh, history, right? Knights and swords and adventurers and dragons that you're trying to fight. Um, all D&D is to me uh, is an opportunity to tell a story together um, with a group of people. Uh, so if your mom enjoys that or enjoys that idea, there's, there's a version of D&D she would enjoy. Um, but if she doesn't, she doesn't like having fun or telling stories, well then, you know, I just, there's no, there's no hope. She likes having fun and telling stories. <laughs> so she might, so she might enjoy it. She would just need the right, she would just need the right DM. You know, she'd need the right storyteller. We end all of our interviews with Would You Rathers. Can we ask you some? Absolutely. Mine is, would you rather be raised by wolves or be dolphins? No. Would you rather be wa- raised by wolves or dolphins? This is I'd rather be raised by wolves or, or dolphins. dolphins. Or by dolphins. Or by dolphins. What'd you say? So... The decision between being raised by wolves or dolphins is a hard one because if I'm raised by dolphins, does that mean I have the opportunity to like breathe in and live in the ocean? Do I, do I get some of the traits of the animals I'm being raised by? Well, you would get to howl and run really fast if you were raised by wolves. It's true. You had to run really fast. That is, that is true. I, I, think I, would probably, I think I would probably choose dolphins though because if I get gills... And if I'm able to swim, uh, you know, really, really fast and like really, really efficiently, I think that sounds like a lot of fun. Have you seen dolphins like dive out of the water and spin in the air and then jump back in? I, I want to be able to do that. We actually once saw dolphins in real life out of a window. Nice. We were going on a cruise and we looked outside while we were eating and saw some dolphins. And let's be honest, wolves and ducks don't really get along that well. No, but dolphins, if you were, if you had anything in common with dolphins, you would be closer to quackalopes. Well, if Duck Hunt was a wolf, then he would get along with a duck. It's true as well. No, Duck Hunt, I don't think he even knows he has a duck on him. Well, he doesn't, (laughs) but he would basically be a friend with the duck. Okay, and Duck Hunt tries eating ducks or oh, taking does... ducks to his owner. Well, in Smash Bros, he doesn't even know he has a duck on his back. Um, my would you rather, would you rather hear a loud beep every hour on the hour or hear a loud beep every 15 minutes but only during daylight hours? Oh, that's awful. Neither of those. Neither of those are good options. Every hour on the hour, but it even happens when I'm sleeping or every 15 minutes, but only during daylight. So your brain has a really interesting way of canceling out things that happen consistently in a repetitive fashion. Um, I would choose, uh, I would choose every hour on the hour because over time I would learn to sleep through it. And that would be less distracting than every, every 15 minutes. Uh, And I am predominantly wait, during daylight both of them are going to mess up my sleep because i i am predominantly nocturnal which means i don't sleep during the night i usually sleep during the day um so if i was hearing a beep every 15 minutes during the day i would get absolutely no sleep at all i was just thinking if the beep would go to sleep (laughs) i think i think your brain would learn to ignore it just like your brain learns to ignore, like if you have other humming or, or ambient sounds, like if you ever go outside and you just listen to how loud it is, um, all the cicadas and bugs and insects and birds, uh, there's a lot of noise. But over, uh, you know, over a period of time with constant noise and constant repetition, your brain just learns that that noise isn't really that important. So you don't hear it. 
But then when your dog starts barking, uh, you suddenly are very aware of, of your dog because that is a noise that your brain has learned is important or is shocking or isn't something that just kind of exists. But um, I would choose um, in the I would choose in the daytime every 15 minutes because I usually don't sleep in the day and it would actually keep me awake. I am normally, sure. I wake up in the middle of the night mm. most of the time and I'm able to go to sleep maybe an hour after I wake up. So in the day, it would actually help keep me awake and then at night I could go to sleep. Or you that's... just go to sleep in like 30 seconds, like once you I d- accidentally woke you up by turning my light on, and then you woke up, and then I went to the bathroom, and you were asleep. So I think, I think your problem has less to do with a constant beeping. Mm-hmm. It's, more, uh, it's more a little brother turning lights on in the middle of the night. Um, so we've been making content like you for like, we've been making it for just a few months and you've been making it for a year and a half. Do you have any advice you could give us? Just keep doing it. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing. Oh, the thing, the mistake a lot of people make is that they uh, give up or get discouraged or um, have goals that they don't, uh, you know, that they don't hit. And so they, they stop Uh, as long as you're enjoying it, as long as you're having fun, uh, continue doing it. Um, and if you stop having fun, uh, figure out why and, and fix that problem, right? Because the only, the only way you're going to keep going is if you're enjoying it. Um, so those are the two things that you should do. You should keep doing whatever it is you want, uh, whatever you're excited about, passionate about, or, or enjoying. Um, and you should do it thoroughly and consistently. And then if you stop having fun doing it, you should figure out why you're not having fun and you should find the fun again. Because at a certain point, that's the only way that you continue it. Thanks for hanging out with us. We really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah, this was really fun. Thanks for having me. And I'm, uh, I'm significantly more jealous now that I know that you both have a Great Pyrenees, a Dachshund, and a Duck. I'll get there one day. And we also have an Australian Shepherd slash Blue Healer. You just have all the animals. All right, I need to move out into the middle of nowhere and get myself a herd of ducks. <laughs> Maybe quackaloops. At least something. This has been a lot of fun. I hope we get to do it again soon. Bye. Bye. See you guys. Thanks for hanging out with us on this episode of Kid Talk. It's been a lot of fun talking to Jesse about Dungeons and Dragons, Root, and other things, including quackaloops. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out on any future episodes. See you later. Bye. Bye.